Uh, we're two minutes ahead of time, but we'll start anyway. Uh, we will start with the keynote speeches of some of our invited guests. And to save time, we will dispense with the lengthy introduction of our speakers, but allow me to say a few sentences about them. Our first keynote speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is Ms. Lorraine Bello Sinkochan, Director, President, and CEO of Wilcon Depot, Inc., whose IPO was one of the most successful in uh, 2017. As you know, Wilcon is the country's leader in home improvement and construction retail store. Uh, Lorraine? Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Chair Phil, for inviting me, our company, to come and share some insights and experience from what happened to when we went public. It has been a little over a year since we went public on March 31st, 2017. It's quite fast, it's already 2018. It's quite a whirlwind. As things began to settle down, we realized that going public is quite similar to getting married. Putting our hearts, mind, and soul into it, we have to be mentally, financially, and even physically prepared for it. No amount of preparation could have made us ready for the change that was to come. The daily life for a company, I'm sure you know, is a constant cycle of challenges and gratification. But a public company's life is akin to living in a glass house, where all your travails and triumphs are under public scrutiny. So how did we, the only publicly listed pure home improvement and finishing construction materials retail chain, Ang Habanon, find ourselves here? My father, Mr. William T. Bello, started the business from humble beginnings 41 years ago in 1977, along Quezon Avenue in Quezon City. It was a 60 square meter store in an area outside of the so-called hardware block which until today is in the vicinity of Alonso, Soler, and nearby streets. From the beginning, he was already all about big ideas. He chose a business different from his father's small grocery. He built his first store away from the traditional location and had to generate his own market from scratch. He modernized the finishing construction materials trade by innovating the depot concept in the country. He built a growth-oriented organization based on mutual trust, common belief in the value of hard work, generosity in imparting knowledge, and nurturing homegrown talents. That organization, which we all now know as Wilcon, has brought us here, where we are today. It was a collective effort by all the members of the Wilcon family, led by my father, William Bello. It was a relatively gradual growth for Wilcon, by the end of 2016, Wilcon had 36 branches. But 36 branches in 39 years, when a country's growth rate had accelerated, still left a lot of room for Wilcon to grow. Our expansion prior to listing was funded mostly by internally generated funds and some domestic bank borrowings. We, my father particularly, meanwhile have been identifying and land banking potential sites for Wilcon stores in the future. Admittedly, prior to listing, Wilcon was in a comfortable lead position in our space. But many times in our family meetings, as my father increasingly passed on work to the three of us siblings, that proverbial adage on family businesses would crop up. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. The first generation creates the wealth. The second, hopefully we will grow it. And the third, we'll squander it. <laughs> I've heard this quite often. As a family too, we wanted to preserve our father's legacy. We are proud of what Wilcon has achieved in this little space we operate in. And we acknowledge our responsibility to our employees, our partner suppliers, and our customers. We felt it is our obligation to sustain or even surpass the success that Wilcon has accomplished so far. And we want Wilcon to be the leader in our industry for generations to come. There is also the matter of the ever-present competition from all sides. Same format stores, um, with stores with overlapping categories with ours, other formats, DIY stores, modern, traditional trade, 
practically everywhere, mushrooming wherever we go. To maintain our position in the industry, we need to continually seize opportunities to increase our lead. We explored the different avenues we could take to bring Wilcon to the next level, and the idea of bringing the business public came to mind several times. We believed it was the best way to cement our fathers and the Wilcon organization's legacy, which at the same time will give us the ready funds to accelerate our growth. Being a private, family-owned company for so long, so long and being quite successful tends to make an organization complacent. There is not enough impetus to improve because everything is seemingly working out great until you wake up to a changed world and you scramble to catch up. So we thought bringing the business public will force us to leave our comfort zone. But nobody wants to leave their comfort zone, but we did it anyway augment and formalize the organization, clean up, streamline, reconfigure our systems and processes to be poised for the expanded operations. When we were preparing for the listing, we decided to list only the retail part of the business to more efficiently focus the equity funds from the public on the most productive part of the business. We took out the retail operations from the now parent company, Wilcon Corporation, and transferred this to Wilcon Depot, Inc. We reorganized the board of the parent company to include independent directors and formed the board of Wilcon Depot, initially with two independent directors and subsequently increased it to four. So our board is actually majority independent directors. We solicited recommendations for independent director candidates from our advisors who have had experience in the network. We then chose the best in terms of qualifications, experience, and fit to complement our management team. This has also made us more mindful in the review and streamlining of our systems, processes, and controls, that these should pass muster with our independent directors and therefore our board. When we were pricing our stock, we as a family decided we wanted to give back to our employees, loyal customers, and partner suppliers by giving them the opportunity to share in the upside. After all, they were very instrumental in Wilcon's success as a business. In fact, we opted for an all-domestic offering, if any of you didn't know that, which meant a lot of retail investors would get the opportunity to participate. These retail investors would quite possibly be our existing and hopefully future potential customers. We wanted to build goodwill among our potential investors because they are the same market that we serve in our Wilcon stores. After we were listed, we started to open up to our untapped market, which at that time were the foreign institutional investors. Although we did not actively seek them out, we met with them with all the buy and sell sides who expressed interest through one-on-one -on -one meetings, conference calls, sell-side sponsored conferences, and a non-deal roadshow. All these activities help boost our share price by introducing the company to a much wider and more diverse and longer-term investor audience. These interactions were also venues where we learned various insights and perspectives about our industry from different areas of the, of the world, actually. We believe that since listing, the demand for our stock from institutional investors would not have been as robust had the company not delivered on its promises. The best investor relations tool that propelled our share price to where it is now is a combination of financial performance, engagement and transparency with our current and potential shareholders, and excellent company brand marketing. Of course, in hindsight, it helped that our listing was timed perfectly. I was just talking about this with my IPO batchmate, uh, Cebu Landmasters. Now that we have achieved a well-diversified mix of investors, we plan to continue to engage with them and be open to any interested investors. For our small investors, we have thus far conducted two stockholder meetings where we interacted with our retail investors. We also believe, though, though that the best way we can reward our retail investors is to consistently deliver earnings growth that would hopefully translate into a fair share price and continuous dividend payouts. 
To ensure continued earnings growth, we remain bullish about our expansion program. In fact, our founder announced in our last stockholders meeting that we may be able to finish our 29 store expansion program ahead of schedule, barring any major untoward event beyond our control. Wilcon has always survived and grown despite the ups and downs of the construction industry and the economy as a whole. The home improvement and finishing construction supplies retail industry has a stable renovation and maintenance market that sustains it in times of construction or property development downturns. We just have to stay on our toes and keep our business sense honed to be able to continue to accurately read our market and stay ahead of the game. In closing, let me express my appreciation for all the trust that our investors have placed in Wilcon. We want to harness this success in the equity market into operational advantage. In terms of marketing, being listed gave us added validation to our market as Wilcon's brand equity significantly increased. The, the demand of outside investors also drives us to strive for greater efficiency and to be more conscientious in our daily operations because not only profit is at stake, but also the name and legacy of our founder. Thank you very much.